silly me, thinking that the New Jersey Devils hockey team was named after, you know, a devil and not its own separate entity. Yes, that's the first thing that pops into my head when I hear the term Jersey Devil. I grew up in a hockey town. It's ingrained in my head whether I want it to be or not. Now, throughout history, it's been known as a few different things, with the most common moniker other than the devil being the Leeds Devil, since the abandoned former home of the Leeds family is rumored to be where this creature was born. I'm your resident ooky spooky girly Alexa, and welcome to the top five Jersey Devil sightings in 2023 we can no longer ignore. In fifth place, we have a spotting near an abandoned house. Just a few weeks ago, Logan Pierce and some of his friends decided to make the 30 minute drive from their place to the Pine Barrens, not looking for anything in particular, but in hopes of finding proof of the existence of the Jersey Devil. The drive took them down Bulltown Road near Batso Village, a place rumored to be home to previous sightings. They passed by an old abandoned house and originally thought nothing of it. After a while of not seeing much aside from deer and the occasional owl, the group decided to head back the way they came and call it a night. As they passed by that old house again, they saw what they described as bright green eyes peering out a window and made the quick decision to drive up to the house, but then the eyes disappeared. A strange noise then caught the attention of Logan and his friend who was in the front seat next to him. She was shining her flashlight around and caught sight of something swooping over the car, describing it as darker in color and larger than any bird she knew of. By the time the group could react to it, nothing was around. They all left the car to investigate, but all that could be found were hoof prints in the sandy soil that were too big to be those of a deer and too small to be from a horse. The group eventually left the home that night, but have vowed to return again soon to gather more evidence. Uh, I wish them luck and uh, safety. In fourth place, we have a spotting from a police officer. Back in February, Officer Brandon Cutler was driving around one evening in Cumberland County and wanted to try and scare his new girlfriend. Real great move, pal. Describing him and his girlfriend as an adventurous couple, they would always joke about trying to find the Jersey Devil. And he decided to drive to the Pine Barrens region. It was around 2 a.m. They were the only car around for miles, no kidding, and the area they found themselves in was mostly full of forestation, with a few houses here and there. Brendan started seeing movement on the right side of the vehicle, partially from the front, right in front of the headlights, but always on the right side. When he first spotted the creature, he thought he was hallucinating from lack of sleep, and I would have thought the same thing. 2 a.m.? <laughs> As someone who considers a 7 a.m. wake up sleeping in, I'm yawning at the thought. His girlfriend also spotted the being, and jointly they've described it as four to five feet tall, covered in brown hair similar to a goat's, and it had black wings that appeared to be leathery or smooth. They were unable to distinguish a head or a face, and when they attempted to drive closer to it, the creature flapped its wings and took off and disappeared. They turned the flashlights on on their phones, got out of the car, and tried looking around the forest for it, only to find Nothing. Brenda was quoted as saying, I'm a lawman in South Jersey and have seen some strange and crazy things in my time on the streets, but this is definitely the creepiest. Now, unlike Logan and his friends I mentioned a moment ago, Brendan and his girlfriend have no intention of returning to the area for more. Thank goodness. In third place, we have a bachelor party gone wrong. David Bennett describes himself as living around 15 to 20 minutes from the infamous Leeds Point birthplace of the Jersey Devil, having grown up going to the Pines often to ride dirt bikes, explore old abandoned houses, and paintball. I've played paintball before, and my only memory from it is getting a really bad wall to my legs, so all the power to you, dude. As a local resident, he described the local Jersey Devil lore with simply that in his life, never taking it for more than a local legend. As a teenager, he had investigated the old Leeds house where the previous two spottings took place, saying that it was just a crumbling foundation. Nothing spooky here. Now for his buddy Max's bachelor party, all of their friends agreed that a full weekend ride and camp out would be perfect. And David was thrilled, having just finished restoring a bike that he wanted to test out. And hey, that sounds like a chill party to me. The group drove out to the area and found a clearing that was quite odd, with no plants, and seemed like the perfect area to set up camp for the weekend, without disturbing nature. Now at the time, David was unaware of the concept of the Devil's Tramping Grounds, which are cleared circles and heavily forested areas where demons like to frequent. Just, you know, a piece of useful information for anyone looking to recreate what's about to happen. The party set up and rode all day, partied all night, with nothing strange occurring that first evening. The next morning, the sky was overcast and looked like it was going to stay that way for the day, ruining the guy's plans, but they opted to try and make the most of the trip. They partied the best they could that day, coming and going from their campsite, which was easy to find from the patch of gravel at the entrance to the area. That night, most of the group had passed out around midnight, exhausted from the constant partying. Around 3 a.m., nature calling woke David up, and he stumbled over to the gravel patch to 
take care of business. As he sobered up, he noticed that the area, known for loud animal noises at night, was eerily silent. He originally assumed he had spooked the wildlife, but started to get the feeling that he was being watched. As he tried to shake off that feeling, he heard a sound he described as hooves clopping on that gravel patch and saw the silhouette of something resembling a deer in the bright moonlight. He soon realized it wasn't an actual deer when the creature shifted its head and the moon revealed a puzzled look on its face, along with glowing beady red eyes. David's logic was that if he moved slowly enough, maybe the creature wouldn't spot him. So he tried inching back towards the tent and accidentally crushed a beer can with his foot, startling the entity. As it fled, David heard the clapping of hooves and what he described as the sound of a huge bird taking off. He tried looking for footprints in the dark, but a massive downpour of rain started washing away any possible evidence before he could capture it. Come morning, David was just trying to forget about the entire night. In second place, we have a backyard spotting. Chad Lynch is another fellow who was born and raised in the South Jersey area, currently living roughly 20 minutes away from the old Leeds house in Pine Barrens that, uh, yeah, I've mentioned a few times today, which is the birthplace of, yeah, the Jersey Devil. Having lived in his home for 29 years, he's described the wooded area as having plenty of creepy things that he has seen and heard, but this time period was the weirdest yet. This past January, he was out shoveling the path in his backyard when he came across hoof prints in the snow, but they didn't resemble regular deer hoof prints. They were spaced as if the creature walked on two legs and had the stride of Andre the Giant. He followed them as far as they led, but they ended suddenly, appearing as if whatever it was had flown off. That night, his ring doorbell captured footage of a creature he described looking like, you guessed it, the Jersey Devil. When he rushed outdoors, he heard unnatural noises, similar to wild pigs and assorted screeching. Trying to see into the forest from his deck, he saw red eyes looking back at him and made the decision to retreat back into his home. Can't say I blame him, it was probably freezing out. Chad has mentioned hearing the same squealing and screeching occasionally at night since, but hasn't tried to hunt for the creature since the incident. Good on ya for having common sense, my dude. And finally, in first place, we have a case of teenage bravery, or uh, stupidity if you ask me. Johnny Ramsey is not the first member of his family to have spotted the Jersey Devil, with his grandma, dad, and boss at work having shared their own tales of spotting with him. So he grew up unafraid to spot the creature. His logic was that since the Jersey Devil was always described as shy, somewhat benign of a creature that was never aggressive and only ever visible enough for a witness to catch a small glimpse of him, it was probably something to feel sorry for instead of fearing. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Back in February, he was working on a farm with his brother's girlfriend, Janice, who didn't have a driver's license and being a very good person, he would drive her back and forth to work every day. Such a good Samaritan. The pair often worked late evening shifts, so poor Johnny would be driving Janice home in pitch black conditions and her home was very deep in the forest in the middle of nowhere. One night, after dropping her off, Johnny was driving along the gravel road, on the last stretch before the main highway, when he was overcome with the feeling of something or someone watching him, which led him to pull over and stop his car. He was smart enough to keep his doors locked at first, and he kept a large wrench under his seat for safety that he was confident he could use if need be. He sat there for a while, trying to calm down, and was looking around to see if he could spot what might have been bothering him in the woods or on the road. Leaving the car, he ventured a few steps away, trying once again to see past the large trees in the area, but spotted nothing weird, and so he returned to his car. He started driving slowly down the road and noticed movement from the tops of one of the tallest trees. Stopping the car yet again, he stared in that direction, trying to get his eyes to focus in the dark. Once his eyes had finally adjusted, he described what he saw as something large larger than a man with a huge head, sitting in a half crouched position as if it was ready to spring from its hind legs at any given moment. It was sadly too dark to make out any other specifics against the dark sky. Deep in his state of concentration at staring at whatever it was in those bushes, Johnny accidentally let his foot slip from the clutch and his car stalled the engine. And this is how we find out he was driving a standard and not an automatic. The creature's head whipped around suddenly at the noise and took off in one swift motion. As it was taking off, Johnny didn't see any wings on its back, but heard a large whooshing noise like large wings would make. In addition to hearing this, Johnny was able to make out some very powerful looking looking legs that were bent at the knees, kind of like a horse's legs would be. Since the car was now stalled and quiet, he was able to hear a loud screech and a whoosh of air above him that grew fainter within seconds. Whatever this thing was, it was fast and it was 
powerful. As the creature took off, the bushes on the tree almost bent in half, thrashing and swaying for a long time after it left. Johnny panicked, managed to get the car started, and drove back to Janice's house in a tizzy, not even remembering to close the car's door as he barged into the home and started babbling about what he had seen. And Janice's dad calmly told him that he must have seen the Jersey Devil. He drove back with Johnny to the spot where he'd seen it and confirmed there was definitely a disturbance in the bushes on that side of the road. He told Johnny that he'd had quite a few sightings of the Jersey Devil on his land before, but he had never said anything to his wife or his daughter, so they wouldn't get freaked out. Big whoopsie on Johnny's front for that one. And that brings us to the end of today's list and the official edition of Pine Barrens to the Never travel here list on my phone. I swear, with the stuff I talk about with you folks out there, that list is growing by the day. Anyone out there watching from Jersey? I would love to hear about any other spawnings in the comments section, or if there's a different cryptid you folks would like me to do a deep dive on, be sure to let me know as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more creepy content from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos. And until next time, stay creepy.